Hi, and welcome to the Arts District Podcast. I'm Lauren. And I'm Georgia. And uh, Georgia and I are on episode 25, the big 25. Uh, Unfortunately, we can't be together this week. Um, So we're back to the old routine of filming separately. Um, Yeah, so uh, I won't waste any time. I'll skip right to it. I uh, just have like two main things to talk about today and one little... um, tidbit of small news um so this week wow i'm not even on the right page i have two things i want to talk about um first is a new exhibition that's coming to toronto and second is a new book um one of the things that i wanted to talk about was it has nothing really to do with art or music and i don't really know if i'd classify it as culture but i just wanted to mention it because uh, a lot of my friends have been talking about this sort of thing lately, Um, my female friends. Just something that I read about in a magazine and I checked it out online. Uh, It's this thing called Yes New Friends. It's a website that was founded by this lady who lives in Toronto named Amy Wood. And it's basically a friend finding service in the GTA, uh, primarily for women, although men can submit forms for it if they're interested, but uh, they don't say that they're very good at finding, like, matchmaking guy friends because they're women and they don't really understand guys. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to mention it because myself included, just moving to a new city, don't really have any friends here. Um, I haven't submitted a form yet to, uh, to see if there's anyone that I would get matched up with in Hamilton, but... I know uh, Georgia lives in Toronto, so maybe Georgia, you can be our little guinea pig for this website. <laughs> um, one of the things that they say once you submit your form um, and they get back to you with a match, a friend match, uh, you have 10 days to go on this friend date. And I don't know what happens if you don't, but uh, yeah, you have 10 days to go. So I guess it kind of forces you to, and a lot of people would be scared and probably just wouldn't go, but you know what, you're not the only one who doesn't have any, um, I don't want to say any friends, but you know what I mean. Um, So some of the things that they ask about in this form is your location, obviously, your horoscope sign, your idea of fun, what you're looking for in a friend, and your ideal friend date activity. I don't know what my ideal friend date activity is. I don't really, I guess maybe going on a hike or... I don't know, looking in Goodwill for cool finds. Anyone else think that's fun? Want to come hang out with me? Um, okay, so moving along then, just I just wanted to mention that, Georgia, you should check it out. Um, the website's yesnewfriends.com. Um, if any of you have tried it by chance, let me know if it worked out for you. The other thing that I just wanted to mention briefly was that uh, that Ray Morris album came out on Monday and I was so excited to get it. Um, I'd been saving this iTunes gift card to use it to put towards the the album and it was so sad because I can't get it. It's only available in the UK. I was like tweeting to to, um, Ray Morris (laughs) saying like how can I get your record in Canada and I mean, obviously no response, sadly, but um, yeah, so I still don't have my hands on it. I tried to Google if I could stream the album, and I couldn't find anything, Um, because a week or so before that, it was available to stream, and I didn't listen to it. I was like holding off, I swore, no, I'm going to wait until I actually own it to listen to it. Well, I missed my chance. I should have listened to it, because now I can't find it anywhere. (laughs) I guess eventually it'll be on YouTube, so I can wait for that, but... I can't wait for it to come out in Canada. I even tried to like set up a UK iTunes account, but I failed that, so no luck. I really wanted to find out if there was like a Kijiji or Craigslist for the UK and see if I could get somebody to buy it for me and then send it to me here in Canada. <laughs> That's how badly I want it. I actually had like a really strange dream last night that Ray Morris came to Aurelia to play a show and nobody was there because nobody knew who she was except for me. And... Uh, yeah, she was really sad because nobody came to the show, but I was like, well, play again, and I'll get some people. So I had people in off the street to come in, and everyone had a great time. So, yeah, maybe that was like foreshadowing or premonition, yeah. 
the exhibition I want to talk about is Douglas Copeland's and it's called Everywhere is Anywhere is Anything is Everything and it's happening January 31st so Saturday um, t and it's going until April 19th it's in cooperation with the ROM and the MOCA so um, the Royal Ontario Museum and the MOCA is the Museum of Contemporary Canadian Art so happening at both venues and I believe you get um, entry to the MOCA with your ROM entry um, so you just have to pay once to see both parts of the show and it is curated and organized by the Vancouver Art, Art Gallery so the um, VAG mm -hmm. B A G, and yeah, I'm really interested to check this out. If you don't know Douglas Copeland, he's Canadian. I think he's from out west. He definitely lives out west now. He is an artist, a novelist, a prominent Canadian cultural person, and um, he's been active for a while now, coming out of the Vancouver School of like the 70s, 80s. I think I've got that right, um, but interesting contemporary work from what I've seen of the exhibition like I've just seen I think I saw something come up on blog to you about it um, if I find the link I will put it in um, and definitely the link to the actual exhibition but from photos that I've seen he's using um, large-scale um, the little square code guys that you scan with your phone I'm blanking on the name of those right now um, Lots of color. Um, he's interested in technology. I've read one of his books, I think it's called Player One, and it's about, um, I think there's a character with some somewhere on the autism spectrum who is sees the world as if through video games, um, so he's definitely interested in technology and stuff like that. So totally up my alley. I'm really looking forward to seeing this Douglas Copeland show. Maybe today's Friday, so maybe I'll check it out tomorrow on Saturday, um, and then this will be up Sunday. Uh, yeah, so definitely, if you're interested, go check that out. Um, it's been ages since I've been to the ROM, so that in itself will be fun, let alone seeing this awesome exhibition. So, yeah. Next thing. The band that I want to talk about this week is a Toronto-based band. They are a folk quintet called Union Duke. Now, they're classified as folk, but I would classify them more as bluegrass or, like, old country. Um, but more like folk bluegrass. Uh, yeah, so they're based in Toronto. They've got two full-length albums under their belt, and they put out these two little EPs that only contain two songs each on them. Um, I guess like teasers or singles or just whatever you want to call them. Um, one of the things I wanted to mention about their albums is that they have great album artwork. Uh, Georgia, you'll probably appreciate that. You can actually see them on their uh, band camp, which I'll mention in a little bit. Um, yeah, but I just really like their album artwork. I don't know who, who did it, but kudos to them. Um, they're mainly known for their performances. That's not to say that their recordings aren't very strong, because they are, but their performances are top-notch. Um, they garner great reviews as being energetic, while also showing off their high-quality musicianship, which is true, because I saw them play at Mariposa Folk Fest. When was that? 2013, maybe, I think it was? Um, they played at the downtown stage. It was the first time that we had ever had a downtown stage. And I remember seeing them thinking, who is this band? Like, they're, they're all like my age and killing it. They were really good, really fun to watch. I really, I remember them. I think I even tweeted about them afterwards saying that they put on a great show. Um, so they're going strong still, still releasing music and still putting on super energetic shows. Um, their sound is I guess kind of like Mumford and Sonsy, if you know what I mean, like banjo, he like heavily reliant on the, that those acoustic instruments. Um, one journalist wrote about their sound, frisky banjos, fast plucked electric guitars, and lusty vocal harmonies are key components of their style. And I think that pretty much sums it up better than I could ever attempt to say it. So uh, if you like the sounds of that, then I think you'll like Union Duke. They've got some shows coming up. They haven't uh, announced too many for 2015, but uh, I know they've got, there was like one in February in this 
town that I don't know where it is, so I didn't bother writing it down. <laughs> but if you want to go see what it was, um, their website's unionduke.com. Uh, they're going to be playing in Toronto at the Horseshoe Tavern on March 13th, and uh, tickets are 10 bucks for that event. Um, the following day, the 14th, they're playing Kitchener at the Boathouse, which is $6. Um, so yeah, hopefully you can make it out to one of their shows. I think uh, you would just enjoy watching them. Uh, so I just want to go back to the, when I mentioned their band camp earlier. Um, if you like the clip of the song that I play for you, you can go buy all of their music off of their band camp, which is unionduke.bandcamp.com. Um, their newest little EP you can buy for whatever price you deem sufficient. <laughs> um, yeah, so I encourage you to buy it and support uh, an upcoming band. Uh, one, the song that I was going to play was a song called A Little More, which uh, CBC Sonica listed as number three on their top 50 songs of 2014 list. But when I listened to it, I was just like, oh, it's just like a song. Yeah, it's a good song, but it wasn't my favorite. Um, so I listened to a couple of them. And then I decided to make the clip one of their newest ones. So I went to that two song EP that they put out on December 5th of 2014. I put 2015, but that hasn't happened yet. Um, so just late last year, they put the, the two songs out, uh, Set Me Off and Country Band. And I thought I'd play a clip of Set Me Off. There's a helicopter or something outside. Uh, Set Me Off, so you can hear something that's fresh and uh, current. So. Here's a clip of Set Me Off by Union Duke. Then you set me off again. Go and set me off again. I'm alive when you come home. You turn me on as fast as you can. You can call me up anytime. I got your number in mind when I see it. I pick it up as fast as I can. You'll ask me where have I been while well, I've been waiting. So there you go. Uh, that was Union Duke Set Me Off. I hope you enjoyed the song. If you like what you heard, go to their band camp, unionduke.bandcamp.com and uh, buy the song, buy the EP, buy all their albums, whatever you like. Um, that was all I had for this, for this episode, episode 25. Um, yeah, looking forward to hearing what George has got to say. The book I want to talk about is... Miranda July is the first Batman. Um, I think it's her first novel. I think she's published short stories before, but this is her first novel as far as I know. And I've only just started it. I'm a couple chapters in, but I'm enjoying it so far. Um, I think we've talked about Miranda July before. She is a artist, filmmaker, writer, and I think she's based in LA or that sort of area. Um, but yeah, you might know some of her films. I think she did one called The Future. Um, and then um, You and Me and Everyone We Know is sort of a, one of her best known ones. And she just has such a quirky style and um, is interested in like human connection and how we communicate with one another. So yeah, I'm not very far into this yet. But I'm really enjoying it. It's fun to get back into fiction because, as you know, I've been reading a lot of um, like sort of modern feminist essays and personal anecdote type books. Um, so yeah, I will get back to you on how this goes. I know that Miranda July was in Toronto last night. Unfortunately, by the time I heard about the reading and the signing and talk, um, it was already sold out. I think that was through the Toronto Public Library. Um, and I didn't think I would be able to get in the sort of rush seating at the door thing um, without tickets, so I didn't end up going, but I'm really sad. I wish I could have seen Miranda July. Um, she's just one of my favorite people right now. So yeah, um, check out this book if you're looking for something that's fiction, that's weird, that's um, about how people connect stuff. Yeah, I will give more details once I have finished this. Um, so I think that's all for my part of the podcast today. 
Uh, we'll see what Lauren has in store, and I will see you next week for episode 26. Oh my gosh, I forgot this was 25. Um, <laughs> if we were together, we would do our two and a half cupcakes. Maybe I can edit that in somewhere, I don't know. Um, yeah, so hope you enjoyed this episode. I will see you next week for episode 26, and have a great week. I hope you enjoyed your weekend. Um, yeah, see you next Sunday. Bye. Bye.